All right, what's going on, everyone? This is FN Crazy, back with week number eight of the Pokemon Speedruns Draft League. Uh, this is my team builder for Geno and the Railgam Tower Tyranitars. Um, so, uh, quick league update. Um, the playoff race is getting very, very tight. Uh, we only have this week and then four more weeks. So we got five, five weeks total. Uh, the playoff race in the Alolan division is very tight. I think everyone's within a game of one another. Um, so the spread from first to last is only three games, meaning that technically anybody can come in first or anyone can come in last, although uh, Gino here has got a little bit of a leg up. Um, so you, you most importantly don't want to come last in the division because that means you don't make playoffs, but getting the number one seed is really potentially really beneficial because you get a buy in the playoffs. Um, so, uh, this week can help decide who gets first in the division. Gino is currently leading by one game over me, um, and yeah, uh, we're looking, looking to try to knock him off his throne. We lost to him in week one, and this is the rematch. So, um, if you want more information on Gino's team from week one, go back and look at the team builder from week one. I'm going to touch on the mons that he had this time that he's picked up in free agency that he didn't have his, uh, his first week. So, um, Motum, uh, sorry, so, uh, first one on the list is Cobalion. So, Cobalion replaced Lucario. Uh, both are fighting Steel types, but Cobalion's a little bit more multidimensional, in my opinion. Uh, it's a lot faster with base 108 speed. It can be run as a pivot with, uh, with, um, Volt Turn, uh, or Volt Switch, rather, and, uh, it has option as a Swords sword Dance set or a Calm Mind set. It's also a good Stealth Rock setter, so, good chance he brings it this week. Uh, it's faster than Charizard base, and if it's holding a Scarf, it can outspeed it, even after a Dragon Dance and Oko with something like Stone Edge. Um, next up, we have Rotom Mo. Uh, probably the third best Rotom form, and it's actually very solid. I think the first three are all pretty good, um, with Wash being the best by a lot, and then Heat and Mo are pretty similar, and then um, Frost and what's the other one? fan are down in the down in the tier order but um it's a you know it's a good a good bulky grass electric type it's got a levitate so it's got a ground immunity um also it is a volt switch user um also gets access just like all the rotom do will-o-wisp uh pain split and defog and its stab grass move is leaf storm so rel relatively solomon can be run specs can be run scarf can be run defensive um last pickup of his was gastrodon uh, I believe this replaced Hippowdon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is the most passive of the water grounds, in my opinion. So you got, you know, Seismitoad, uh, Swamp Birch, you got um, even Quagsire. Um, but uh, it also has the best recovery because it has Recover. Um, it also gets access to Stockpile and Toxic as well. But it does not have access to Stealth Rocks. But he's got other options on that front. So, let's talk about my team this week. Um, so, the first thing I want to mention, well, we're going to switch over here, is um, I actually originally had a much different plan that was a little bit of a gimmicky thing that I was planning on doing this week, and because some move compatibility uh, reasons, I ended up not running it. It was also a really big risk to run, so I, I'm, I'm not that upset I didn't get to run it in the scheme of winning. Um, I do think it was one of those things where it was like a eggs meat basket situation. I very well could have swept an entire team with my original plan but um, it was also really, really gimmicky. So um, we're on a little bit more of a straight and narrow plan, but that means that my team is a little bit different than I initially planned. So first, we're going to talk about Charizard. So week one, Zard um, was getting walled very hard uh, by Altaria. Um, so we're changing out the set a little bit this time. EVs are very similar to last time, if I'm not mistaken, just because it all kind of lined up well. So I, I ended up not going with Swords Dance over um, Dragon Dance or Swords Dance because Altaria last time was a very hard check, and even after a Swords Dance, I couldn't break it without risking dying. And faster Pokemon like Cobalion and Salazzle, either which can be Scarf, can beat Dragon Dance, so I didn't go for Dragon Dance either um, because they either get Stone Edge or Dragon Pulse to kill me, Revenge kill me. Toxic is there as my sort of punish to the Altaria. Um, the idea being is once it Mega Evolves, it loses Natural Cure and it gets Pixelate, and then hitting it with the Toxic on the switch in, especially if we establish a little bit of a play pattern like we did last time where, you know, I'm 
either roosting or doing something on the switch in and then switching out, I can hit Toxic on maybe the second time or third time in uh, if he keeps switching it in, especially because he'll commonly be having his steals in against me and then having to switch them out. Um, so he's not commonly going to be switching in something like Cobalion against me, for example, or even Celesteela. I'm going to be in on Celesteela. So um, that's the idea with this set. Other than that, um, I ended up going with Dragon Claw over Earthquake because it hits a lot of other things for neutral damage pretty hard, better than Earthquake did. So like, I, I felt like it was worth running even though he has some steel types that don't like, don't mind taking it. And it does, it does a lot, it doesn't hit um, the fairy type dragon uh, in uh, Altaria, but I think it was worth running. And with the Toxic, I feel like that balances out a little bit because I still can flare Blitz Altaria if needed. It just has a lot of recoil. Um, so yeah, this set is a little bit weird. It's, it's kind of uh, in it's kind of in response to how our week one match went. I don't think it's gonna be easy for me to sweep with Zard the same way I would normally. Um, next up, we're, we're gonna go ahead and I guess we'll just skip over here to Landorus. So this week, Landorus is running a very similar set to week one. Um, this set is basically the same idea, but much bulkier. I have a lot more defensive EVs in, in place with 232 HP and some defensive stats to kind of even things out. Um, that with uh, Intimidate allows me to take a lot less damage from Celesteela, who this is sort of like a secondary check to. It's not great heads up against it because of Leech Seed to protect, but it's decent. Um, leftovers over Zemu for longevity's sake, just like last time. Uh, and this is sort of, like I said, a secondary check to Celesteela. I can at least threaten it um, a good amount. Um, so the next thing on the list here I want to talk about is... Uh, Scizor. So Scizor was the only Pokemon that I'm bringing this time that I did not bring last time. Um, I think that the the um, Comface set, while while it was cute, was too much of on like a little bit of a razor's edge. Like it couldn't quite reliably. Like I pretty much had to have no residual damage dealt to me at all to be able to reliably check Altaria. This is not a great check to Altaria, but it's okay because with Akaberry. I'm two hit by flamethrower, and bullet punch allows me to outspeed. Also, it's a decent check to Mew. Again, hoping hoping it's not carrying flamethrower, um, but uh, U turn does quite a bit of damage, and I can at least bluff a pursuit, so maybe he'll have to stay in. So, um, the rest. I, this is very similar to the set that I ran two weeks ago against Ranger Squid, and I hated. But I have a lot more attack HP uh, invested this time. I have less bulk. Um, and I'm adamant, so I'm I'm really here to deal damage, and the Akaberry is just to tank a random flamethrower and threaten the two-hit KO. Unfortunately, I don't quite two-hit KO defensive um, Altaria. I'm very close, and I'm like 83% after Stealth Rock or something like that the, to two-hit KO it, so I can stay in and two-hit KO if necessary, and at least scare it out. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, the Scizor this week. Um... Next up, I want to talk about Neolego. So this Neolego, also very similar to last time, but with a twist. Um, so Neolego last time did a really good job at covering against Salazzle and a really good job at com covering against Altaria. He did not bring Earthquake last time. So what I'm hoping is, is that he, he either has to do this. He either has to run Earthquake to help beat Neolego. And I'm going to have to be very careful because Neolego can be very good this week if I let it. But if he runs Earthquake, maybe he changes up his Altaria set and he's not defensive, or maybe and goes for like a Dragon Dance set. Um, that's the one thing I'm the most scared of is Dragon Dance Altaria, because if it Dragon Dances, I'm going to have a hard time beating it, because previously I was Scarfed, and the Scarf allowed me to outspeed Altaria after one Dragon Dance and threaten it with Sludge Wave. If he's Dragon Dance this week with Earthquake, I can't outspeed him, and I have to bluff the Choice Scarf, basically. So, we'll see how that goes. It's it's The good thing is that Expert Belt doesn't give me up as being cho not choice, and I can choose to when to reveal that information later in the game, um, and then hopefully kind of uh, tr trick him into thinking that I am Scarfed. Um, but I think the Expert Belt, belt damage will help a little bit, so I'm hoping that that will... And, and switching moves is helpful because uh, I can, I can like I said, maybe if SL Steel switches in expecting a Sludge Wave, I Sludge Wave and miss, and then maybe it's low enough health and it goes for, say, a Leech Seed. If I get to two-hit KO, it was Thunderbolt. So a lot of really interesting options there because of the Expert Belt over the Scarf, so I'm really excited about using that. Um, him having 
faster, like Cobalion, for example, it's a little bit annoying. Um, because I don't do a ton to Cobalion, unfortunately, with T-Bolt. Um, but, you know, I have to hit it on the switch in, so we'll see how that goes. It's gonna not be quite as effective as it was week one. Um, but that's gonna be the game plan. Um, next up, Celebi. This Celebi set is a, almost a carbon copy of my week one set. The main difference is I'm running Leech Seed over Stealth Rocks, because Scissor freed up Defog off of Lando, so Lando can run Stealth Rocks. In that slot and I felt Leech Sheet was the best option. Originally I was going to run Nasty Plot, but I realized that if I get a Nasty Plot up, I have to have already killed Celesteela for it to do anything. And even then, there's other threats like Salazzle that can punish me for, for Nasty Plotting, so it's like, Nasty Plot's not going to do it, I'd rather punish punish the switch in on Celesteela with Leech Sheet. Um, so it's actually more offensive, mostly to hit like Cobalion and um, his uh, other Pokemon a little bit harder. Um, also can do a decent amount to um, Chestnut uh, with Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam also does a good amount to Altaria, so it can act as sort of a secondary check to Altaria. Um, Life Orb is for the extra range and damage. Um, but I have Giga Dream over, over Leaf Storm, don't need to run Grass Knot this time, and I have Leech Seed to, to gain a little bit of health back to make up for that. Um, last set is Hoopa. So last time Hoopa unfortunately died due to my own negligence. I basically let it die for free um, by uh, neglecting to remember that Mew had shown me U-turn already during the, the set. So um, this time, I'm not running that risk. I had Electrium Z Nasty Plot last time. That's the first and last time I run a Nasty Plot set. Um, I really like this as a revenge killer. Um, does a good number to Mew, although unfortunately last time he ran Culverberry on Mew, and he's a good chance he's going to run it back again this time. So I'm hoping that I can get some chip damage on Mew and still kill it with Hyperspace Fury. Um, I have Gunk Shot for Altaria as a backup plan, although unfortunately I do not outspeed Altaria after a Dragon Dance, so um, I'm running the risk of, of losing that particular fight um, if he's Dragon Dance again. Uh, Trick also is beneficial because I can actually tank a Heavy Slam an okay, I can take like 30%, 33%, 35% from it, and trick a Scarf onto Celesteela. Also tricking a Scarf onto something like, say... Um, Gastrodon is pretty good. Tricking a Scarf onto something like Lantern is pretty good. Tricking a Scarf onto something like Chestnut is pretty good. So those are some al alternative options. Fire Punch does a little bit more damage to Mo Rotom and to Chestnut. Uh, I think Gun Gunk Shot's probably better for those two, but it also hits... Um, it hits... Uh, Celesteela the hardest so and it and it's if you get locked into it you can also hit those other things so fire punch was the last option there um over something like thunderbolt because he has bolt absorb and stuff like that um but yeah primarily going to be hitting gunk shots and hyperspace theories and having the access to the much uh like much higher speed revenge kill um and i can kind of maybe surprise something like altaria for example um, and kill it. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, I like having a Scarfer that is pretty, you know, pretty powerful because uh, Hoopa's base attack is so good. Its special attack is also really good, but because between the base attack and the power of the individual moves like Hyperspace Fury and Gunk Shot, you get a lot of uh, mileage out of having a Scarf, in my opinion. So we'll see how it goes. Um, overall, I'm actually a little bit... I don't think this team is as well crafted as some of my other teams because a lot of it was copying my previous work and seeing what he did and, and I feel like I could have if we played match one with all the information I have now over again then I think I had a, I had the tools to beat him but this time I feel like he has thrown enough new things on his team where I, I haven't really changed much on mine and still have to kill Celesteela you still have to kill Altaria those two are the biggest and most dangerous things, and then between Mew, Mew could be running a completely different set this time. It might not be a defensive Mew, it might be an offensive Z Crystal user. Um, like, there's just so many wild cards on his team that you have to consider. Like, he could just literally change Mew set and Altaria set, and all of my sort of 
mu muscle memory from week one goes right out the window. I have to reconsider matchups all over again. So that's why I'm a little bit reserved. I like having a couple switch up slots like the Dragon, the Charizard, like the new Hoopa set, like the um, the Expert Belt on the Lego. So I'm hoping that that throws enough curveballs into the situation where I'm not red too easily, but got to play the game and figure it out. And hopefully I'll make less mistakes. And even if I lose, it'll be closer. Um, Gino, great player. He's only lost once. And that was a little bit of an oversight to a brand new coach uh, in the in the league um, who got to rebuild their team after um, Professor Dad had to drop out of the league due to personal reasons. So Gino, for all intents and purposes, is in the uh, Island Conference number one seed, in my opinion. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit uh, below Roush, but um, we got to be able to take this to, to have a chance of winning the division, in my opinion, the two-game swing. So... Um, yeah, that's the team. Um, ideally, ideally we need to wear down Celesteela and Altaria. That's the game, main game plan. And hopefully between Toxic on Charizard and the different Neolego set, I can run some surprises in there. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll try to pick up a W this week. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and yeah, peace out.